Hoy en la noche del Lobo Fin os traigo una película de misterio atmosférico. El beso de la muerte o The Dead Kiss. Una película estadounidense de 1933, protagonizada por David Maynors como un afamado escritor, la bellísima Adrian Amesy y el gran Bela Lugosi como el director del estudio. Este thriller reúne a los tres actores principales de Drácula del año anterior, Lugosi, Maynors y Edward von Sloan. Producida por KBS Production en Tiffany Pictures y distribuida por Sono Art World White Pictures. La película reutilizó sus principales recursos argumentales en el film francés de 1946, Esa no es la manera de morir protagonizada por Eric von Stromheim. Esta película es una adaptación de un libro de Madeleine Saint-Denis. Mientras filma la escena final del beso de la muerte, la estrella es asesinada de verdad. Hay montones de sospechosos, pues ha flirteado, actuado o contraído matrimonio con casi todas las mujeres del estudio. Cuando la protagonista es detenida, el guionista del estudio empieza a investigar el asesinato para demostrar su inocencia. La película tiene una duración de 75 minutos y su fecha de estreno fue el 8 de enero de 1933. La película está en versión original subtitulada al español, debiendo activar estos subtítulos para poder leer. Sin más, os dejo con el beso de la muerte. Remember, the man in Mike's car has got to see him, too. Oh, that's fine. I'm going to kiss him. And how? Good. You might as well make him happy. It'll be the last pair of lips that hit him. No. You don't think he could have gone away, do you? Here he comes now. I just couldn't pass you up. Believe it or not, I never saw her in my life before. I must have overlooked something. Already shame, sir. Close to noise. Right under me very nose. Your nose. I'll get the car, sir. Again, soak number 10. Up high, 99. Quiet. Quiet. Do you want to move in and take a close up at the top of the stairs? No, that was terrible. I'll make it over. Yes, sir. We'll do it again, folks. Uh, all right. 399. 399. 399. 399. 399. 399. 399. 399. 399. 399. 399. 399. 399. 399. 399. 399. 399. 399. 399. 399. 399. 399. 399. 399. 399. 399. 399. 399
Move that car back here. All right, hold it. Come on. Hit him out. Take it easy. Oh, uh, Mr. Benzo. Yes, Mr. Benzo. When you dine in, Oh, uh, Mr. Benzo. When you die this time, let's have less gymnastics. And uh, don't spin like a top when you fall. Okay, Bernard. That's the case, Bernard. Let's go. Come on, folks. Yeah, move that one over a little. What's the matter? 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 Stand back, everybody. What's the matter? Come on, now. Hey, Chief. Call the doctor. Come on, give me a hand. Let's get him to his dressing room. We won't need a doctor, George. He's dead. Dead? Dead? Round up every man that had a gun. Get the property man and find out who loaded those guns. And see if the body isn't touched. I'm going to phone the front office. Yes, sir. All right, everybody, line up over there. Oh, all right, come on. And all you fellas in that gun stand over there. Hey, Phil, come on. Keep that door closed and see that no one leaves the stage and no one comes in. Yes. My dear Mr. Little, since I read your scenario, I have come to the absolutely conclusion that your name, Mr. Little, fits you something beautiful. And furthermore, and yet besides, ah. Uh, Yes? Oh, yes, Mr. Avery. Just a minute. It's Mr. Avery. Tell him to finish on schedule. He's two days behind already. Talking to me is a wasting time. But he says it's important. That's the trouble. He's too important entirely. Hello. What? Brent. Shot. Dead. Oh, that's going to cost me a fortune. What a calamity. Quick. Call Steiner, tell him, tell him Brent was killed, shot. What a calamity, what a calamity. I get it, Jill, thanks. Yes? My own Brent was shot on the set. Killed. Mr. Grossman has gone to the stage. I'll be right there. Miles Brent. Killed. On general principles, not a bad idea, except that he happens to be one of our stars. Get back to your office and do what you can to keep the papers off this until you hear what happened. Don't give out any story until you hear from me. Sure, but rescue me as quickly as possible. They'll be on my neck just as soon as the police get the joyful news. Miss Money? Yes? Yeah. Phone their brigade on the lot and tell them not to let anyone in or out until they hear from me. Very well. Thanks. Hey, why don't you watch where I'm going? What's the hurry, Gumshoe? Miles Brent's been shot. Well, now there's a job that should have been done years ago. Oh. <laughs> Don't have to rewrite any stuff for the deaf kids now. No. Say, Marsha was on the set with him, wasn't she? Sure. But I don't think she did it. What stage? Three. Drop this stuff in my office, will you? Miles Brent, huh? Picture actor. My wife always liked it. I have that kind of trouble, too. <laughs> Come on, let's go. <laughs> All right, fellas. Here's something hot. Miles Brent killed. Shot. Sound stage number three, Tone Art Studio. Let's do it. Sure, wait just a minute. Tone Art Studio. Hey, operator. Operator. Hey, that's the evening star phone. You're telling me? Hey, Storm, give me the journal, will you, please? Hello. Tone Art? I want Pat Hill in the publicity department. Come on, snap into it. You know me, Connolly. I never held out on the Evening Star yet. Yeah, I know all about your deadline. Yeah, you'll get the facts. Call me back. Yeah, never mind. I'll get it. Yes? Yes, Morris, I know. But can I help it to be shot in the morning? You've got to take those things as they come. Yeah, I'm going over there right away. The police ought to be here now. Yeah, call me back in ten minutes. <laughs> Come back here. Get back there. 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 Get back there.
Yeah. Yeah. Ambulance coming. Yeah. Detective Lieutenant Sheehan, Homicide Squad. Who's in charge here? I've been trying to get things straightened out for you. My name is Steiner, studio manager. What happened? Well, the company was shooting a scene, during which several people fired guns at Brent. And someone used real bullets, huh? People do get hurt that way. That's the director's guess. Oh, the director. Did uh, he happen to guess who did it? No. Well, that's unfortunate. Looks like we'll have to do some guessing on our own. Come on, Hill, loosen up. Was it an accident or did somebody really bump off? I tell you, I don't know. Then let us in on the lot so we can find out. Well, I can't let anyone on the lot. Marsha Lane was with him in the picture, wasn't she? Sure, she was doing the lead opposite him. Marsha, oh, his ex-wife. That helps the story. Hey, what's the name of the picture? The Death Kiss. The Death Kiss. She what a tie-up. Pardon me. Hey, off some phone. Uh, just a minute, boys. I'll be right with you. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. Can we get the angle on this thing? Eight men with guns? Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Well, it might have been an accident, but... Frank, you don't think it was murder? Darling, I don't even know. Maybe he just died of old age. Maybe he never even existed at all. Now, you wait here. I'm going to have a look around. Yours. You break it. Nothing but blanks left in these guns. Any other guns on the set? That's all I know of. You, you see, Captain, it's, it's strictly an accident. Lieutenant Shea, what's your name? Leon A. Grossmith. I'm the president of this concern. Well, what about it? Now, look here, uh, Sergeant. Do you realize what this means already, huh? You have no idea. It cost me up to now $239,351. Yes, and it cost Brent his life. Which also loses me money. I can't have no more Brent. Now, pardon me, Lieutenant. Mr. Grossmith means to convey that this regrettable accident need not be converted into a Roman holiday for the rabble. Now, I assure you that Mr. Grossmith feels deeply, very deeply, the tragedy of this affair. And his point is, naturally, not to throw consternation into that great and unseen army of Mr. Brent's admirers. Now, that is precisely what Mr. Grossmith means. That's just what I was going to say. Mr. Steiner. Mr. Steiner. Yes, uh, pardon me. What is it? The papers are on my neck. I've got to tell them something. There's no use stalling any longer. Now, they've got a story now about a mysterious woman. Well, they don't know themselves, but they say it makes a great story. Tell him it was an accident. They won't believe it. Then make them. You don't know those boys. They've got imagination. I don't care if they've got fallen arches. Tell them the brand shooting was an unfortunate accident. Yes. Is that satisfactory to you, Lieutenant? Nothing satisfactory. I can't tell what it is because I don't know myself. Oh. Here's all you had on him. Oh. Keep that. I'm sorry to gum up the works, but it wasn't an accident. It's murder. Murder? Oi, what a calamity. How do you know? This is the bullet that killed him. The 38 caliber center fire. All the guns the extras used were 45s. And you can't fire a 38 bullet through a 45 gun. It's an old Chinese principle. Where did you get this? Out of the wall of the set. Don't you know better than to meddle in police matters? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to meddle. I just wanted to help. You see, uh, 
I like to dabble a bit in murder cases. Well, you just go and dabble someplace else. All right. Who is he? One of our scenario writers, Franklin Drew. Oh, writes detective stories, I suppose. Yes. <laughs> How did you know? They always do. Well, this makes a difference. Looks like we've got a murder on our hands. Oh, you go and get that assistant director, that brilliant young man who said there were no other guns on this set. Right. Who is Marsha Lane? What? You don't know who is Marsha Lane? Over a million dollars we spend advertising her in Horatio. She was on the set just a minute ago. Well, let's have a talk with her. How? Ask Miss Lane to come here. Yes, sir. Now, Steiner and the detective want to see Miss Lane immediately. Well, hurry. I'm fluttering, sweetheart. <laughs> Bill, tell Miss Lane Steiner and Dick want to see her. Okay, Chief. O.P. Uh, rush Miss Lane over to Mr. Steiner and Dick. Now? No, you next Tuesday, you sap. Oh, come on, get going. Oh, all right. Uh, pardon me, Miss Lane. Mr. Steiner and the Dick want to see you. Thank you. You're welcome. What can they want with me? Oh, they just want to annoy you with a lot of routine questions. You see, they always question people like you first to give you ones plenty of time to make up good alibis. It's part of the system. It's been going on for years. Sit down, Miss Lane. Thank you. I don't wish to be unpleasant, but there are a few questions I'd like to ask you. Certainly. How long uh, have you and Brent been separated? We were divorced last May. Why? Well, I don't quite see... The divorce is a matter of record, Lieutenant. I don't think we need to go into that now. Say, will you go up to your office and write bad little boy 500 times? <laughs> when did you last quarrel with Miles Brent? I don't remember. Didn't you love him? I wouldn't answer that, Marsha. Say, just what is your interest in this case? Personally, I don't care who killed Brent. But I would like to know how it was done. Besides that, I'm... I'm a friend of Miss Lane's. Wasn't your name mentioned during the divorce proceedings? No. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you. What did you do with your gun, Miss Lane? My gun? Yes. I didn't have a gun. Didn't you use one in the picture? No. But when you fired with the other... As a matter of fact, if Miss Lane had fired, she couldn't have hit him. She was around on the other side of the set when the shooting took place. Say, if you don't lay off, I'm going to take you downtown. <laughs> what for? How do I know what for? Oh, good. I was beginning to be afraid that you might say something sensible. Hey, what are you trying to do there, huh? Don't move now. I got you surrounded. Don't lie now. What'd you try to hide in there, huh? Why, nothing. I... Uh... Yeah, we'll see about that. Hold this a minute. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, you don't. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This letter, already the mail, was found in Miles Brent's pocket. In this letter, he told his lawyer that Marsha Lane refused to sign a release as beneficiary of his life insurance policy. So you stand to collect $200,000. Miss Lane's lawyer wouldn't let her sign the release. I know all about that. Say, it's too bad you weren't the one that was shot. So that gives you a pretty nice motive. Oh, no funny business now. Come on now. Come on, keep moving now. <laughs> There's your man, Chief. I caught him red-handed. He was trying to ditch his gun. Look, it's loaded, too. I tell you, I gave your brace. Put the bracelets on him, Owen. Now, ain't that astounding? Something told me to take a squint around. I sees him trying to ditch his gun, see? And I puts two and two together. I says to my... I says to myself, that's the man. I guess I used uncanny skill. 38 caliber and loaded. It's the gun, all right. Who is this fellow? Name's Chalmers. He was an extra on the set. Why did you kill Brian? Oh, I never killed nobody. You can't alibi yourself out of this. That's the only 38 gun on the place. You killed him. Why? I'll tell you I didn't. Now, you've got to listen to me, huh? You'll have plenty of time to talk later on. Do you know this man? Why, yes. Everyone on the lot knows him. He was head electrician here for years. 
How much did you pay him to kill Brandt? Now, wait a minute, Lieutenant. Why not pin the murder on the murderer? That's not against the rules. What are you talking about? Chalmers didn't kill Brent. Well, how do you know? This gun hasn't been fired. How did this gun come to be loaded? I loaded it for Brent. I lost my nerve. So you had planned to kill Brent, huh? Yes, I wanted to kill him. I had every reason in the world to kill him. But he made no attempt. So you can't arrest him. Not unless you want to make a fool of yourself. You know, I'm beginning to think you're giving us the rats. Prove it. You're a detective. <laughs> Take them off, Hilliker. And maybe we'll put them on him. Well, we seem to be right back where we started. Yes, perhaps you have some very valuable suggestion. Yes, I have. What? The cameras were photographing when Brent was killed. There might be something very interesting on the film. It wouldn't hurt to look. Not bad. How soon can we see the stuff? Uh, we could get the print in, say, three or four hours. Well, we... Get them going? Oh, certainly. Come, Mr. Smith. You take the name and address of every person on this set and warn them all about trying to leave town. Right. In any of your books, does the detective ever sock the novelist on the nose? <laughs> no. Write it in sometime. Seems to me like a good idea. Bill, John? Marcia. Oh, Frank. It won't be very pleasant to see it all over again. But it may help us a lot, carefully. here? I think so, Mr. Grossman. Mr. Steiner's in a projection booth. He'll be right in. All right. Here he is now. You ready, Mr. Grossmith? Yes. Mr. Grossmith's ready. Ah! Quiet, please. Quiet. All right, turn him over. Rolling. Mark it. Here. Thanks, handsome. I just couldn't pass you up. Well, believe it or not, I've never seen her in my life before. I must have been overlooking something. Oh, ready, shame, sir. Most of Doyle. Right under my very nose. Your nose? Oh, I'll get the car, sir. <laughs> what? Right what? Turn around those lights! I wonder what that was. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. He's a sharp blue. Yeah, it looks like it was done with a blunt instrument. You know, I had an uncle once who was knocked out the same way, only he got hit with a shovel. Whoever rocked your cradle overdid it. A rouge tip cigarette butt started it off. Can you tell me, is that studio makeup? Hard to see. Perhaps we should our makeup man to tell you. Thanks. How did it happen? Uh, I swear, I don't know. I was leaning over the machine. Checking the focus. I thought the building came down on me. How about another print? Yes, and we'll take care of it this time. There was something on it. And whoever touched it off didn't want it to be seen. We can have the laboratory run one off right away. 
Could we, Mr. Goldsmith? Why, yes, there's no reason why we couldn't. Will you come with me? No, uh, Hillock, I'll go with you. I have another angle. Where'll I find this makeup man? Makeup department? Clear around the other end of the lot, just the end of S Street. Sounds like a sleeper job. I'll show you if you like. Thanks. It's a special panchromatic rouge of my own make. Only two people on the lot are in the habit of using it. Who are they? Miss Collins and uh, Miss Lane. Who's Miss Collins? Uh, she's one of our players. Is she in this picture you're photographing? No, I believe she's working in the Night Riders, as they're out in location. And the only other person on the lot that uses this rouge is Marshall Lane, as far as I know. I see. Thanks. You're welcome. Now, wait a minute. You have quite a stock of this rouge on hand, haven't you? A few tubes of it? Just as I thought. Anybody could get at it. Not very well. All the makeup that is not in use is kept in the cabinets. And the cabinets are locked? Yes. Excuse me. Hello. Uh, just a minute. It's for you. Hello. Yes, Hillicker. How? All right. You stick around there and see what you can find out. Tell Steiner I'll see you at his office. The negative of that last scene has been ruined. Someone poured acid in the container. This thing gets more muddled every minute. You telling me? How do I get to Steiner's office? I'll show you. Thanks. And you're not going with me. Uh, right at the head of the street. Thanks. You ought to have a map of this place. Oh, Lieutenant. No, but anybody could have taken the rouge from Miss Lane's dressing room. Sure. A very interesting detail. What do you make of it, Drew? Got me. It's more of a mystery than anything I ever wrote. What I can't understand is why anyone should want to murder Prince. Now, if it were a supervisor. <laughs> I don't see why anybody wants to murder anybody. It's a silly idea. You going to try and solve it? Yes, why not? It'd be fun. Besides, Marsha? Yes. Oh, say, Tom, if you see her, don't say anything about that rest. This is only upset her. No, 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 no. Of course not. If I can help you, let me know. Thanks. Has anything been moved on the set? No. Police instructions were to leave everything undisturbed. Well, I'm going to have another look around. I want to find out just how he was murdered and with what gun. Yeah, I got, a, I got an idea how Brent was killed. You want to hear it? <laughs> Some other time. Better go home and sleep it off, Chalmers. No, that's what you think. Chalmers don't know anything, huh? Well, listen, I've been on the set and I've been seeing things. Yeah, snakes and pink elephants, I'll bet. All right, all right. Be smart, huh? Be smart. Now, listen, you're going to come to me later. <laughs> oh, I'll see you in the morning. Go on home. <laughs> the old boy evidently cashed his pea check and drank it. Yeah. Want to have a look around with me? No. Oh, I'm not much of a detective. Besides, Mrs. Avery's waiting for me. All right. Good luck. Thanks.
find Sheehan. He's someplace on the lot. Bring him here. Mr. Drew. Mr. Drew, what happened? What happened? Here. Here. Swell, ain't it? Oh. I made it myself. Who's in there? It's all right, Sheehan. Now, I found the gun that killed Brent. Where? Right here in this lamp. Why, well, it's gone. Probably got tired sitting there and decided to take a walk. No, I'm not kidding. I came down on the set to have a look around. Just by accident, I noticed this, this smudge on the lamp here. So I looked inside. Found a small derringer fastened there, attached to an electromagnet. There's the wire it was connected to. And I got a bump on the head that knocked me out. Well, this proves one thing. Whoever killed Brent, a whole lot about electricity. Who has charge of these lines? Head gaffer? Well, what's that in English? The chief electrician. Who is he? Al Payne. Where can I find him? Here, Tom will take you over. Come here, kid. Let me take a look at that head. Now, that's all right. Now, listen. You stop monkeying around with police matters. It's a tough racket. That head of yours won't stand another wallop. Come on, let's get going. Mr. Drew, I've been thinking. No. Yeah, the first thing I ask myself when I investigate the murder is, who done it? Well, that sounds logical. And the next thing I ask myself is, who could do it? And then? And then I ask myself again, who wanted to do it? And how do you answer yourself? Well, I ain't come to that yet. You take Chalmers, for instance. He didn't like Brent. Well, why should he be an exception? He didn't like Brent, and the kind of Brent had him fired. When was this? A couple months ago, when Chalmers was head gaffer, they had an argument. Head gaffer? Yeah, Chalmers is an electrician, isn't he? Yeah, Chalmers had a couple of drinks, and him and Brent had an argument. Say, Gully, you are a first-class gumshoe. <laughs> investigator. All right, investigator. Right now, will you run up to the casting office and investigate and find out where Chalmers lives? Sure, what are you going to do, put the finger, I mean, apprehend him? Maybe. You want to come along? Oh, boy, I'll say. Hey, gun? Yeah. Oh. Got my gun, my dad's in me, though. Come on, let's get going. The director has nothing to do with it. The cameraman really sets the light. You mean he tells you where to put the light? Yeah. When was this set late? The afternoon before. They rehearsed the scene with the principals so they wouldn't hope when they called the extras. Do you remember anything particular about that one light? To be truthful with you, we had a lot of arguments on that set. Mr. Steiner didn't like the photography and he wanted more light. Steiner? Was he there when it was rehearsed? Yes. Who else? Well, they're all there, with the exception of the extra people. There were no extras there, huh? No, only Chalmers. You know, he's a sort of a privileged character around this lot. He used to be our head gaffer. Chalmers used to be an electrician? Yes. Miss Lane felt sorry for him made Mr. Avery give him a bit in her picture. Oh, Miss Lane got him the job. Huh? Yes. Could you uh, give me the address of the cameraman and uh, Chalmers? Sure. And uh, by the way, if a writer by the name of Drew asks you anything, don't answer him. Who? See? Well, uh, you can't keep me from hoping. This is it. about his comings and goings. Doesn't he answer the bell? No, he doesn't. I was just going in. Cleaning day today, you know. I suppose he's lying stiff and the place all cluttered up with gin bottles. Let's go in and have a look around, Captain. As the uh, tenant, yes, I mean, though, he wasn't so bad until he lost his job. Then he started acting queer like. See, I told you. I laid down an order to him. I said, Mr. Chalmers, my bungalow court isn't an alcoholic ward. 
As I thought, drunk again. Well, this is the end. This is no Keely cure. Out he goes. I'm sick and tired of his carryings on. The fellow's dead. Dead? Well, he didn't think of me. No, not him. I suppose my 2850 back wind has gone up the flue. Did I have Chalmers spotted? All I did was ask myself, who done it? Poison, all right. Familiar smelling stuff, too. Boy, that guy had drink anything that wasn't too thick to chew. Well, I guess this about washes up the case, eh, Mr. Drew? Looks like suicide to you, eh, Gully? Sure. I guess Sheen would think so, too. Uh, he may be dumb, but he ain't blind. He's not as dumb as he looks. Do you wear a wristwatch, Gully? Huh? Do you wear a watch on your wrist? Well, you see, it's a present from the wife. I gotta wear it. Why do you wear it on your left wrist? Well, I use my right hand the most, because I'm right-handed. You ever try to write with it on your right? No. Neither did Chalmers. Which makes this note a very interesting piece of fiction. Say, Gully, come here. Take a look in here. Now, what do you see? A bottle of gin and a piece of ice. What else? Use your powers of observation. Oh, you mean that piece of wool with lettuce in there? Don't you notice that little service door in the back has been left open? Whatever. The ice men probably left it that way. My wife says you can't trust those ice men anyway. If the iceman had left that little door open when he put in the fresh cake, there wouldn't be any ice there now. Oh, I never thought of that. Let's have a look outside. have stood here a long time. Them are fresh prints, ain't they? Step up there a minute. Look out for those tracks. Now what? Look through the window. You see Chalmers sitting there? Yeah, the door's open. Supposing someone stood here and Dr. Chalmers' jazz box on this side then stood here and watched him drink his last drink through the window, what would you say? And then watched him die. Went in and wrote the note and put the pencil on his hand, huh? Yeah, only there's where he made his mistake. Put the pencil in the wrong hand. That's just what I was thinking. Gully, you know, if a car was parked here, it would entirely conceal that door and that window. Yeah? Then Chalmers didn't kill himself, huh? Let's leave that to Sheehan. If I'm any good as a guesser, he ought to be here by now. I found him slumped over on the table. Hey, huh? Don't let Sheehan know what we found out. I got you. The captain got here 15 minutes ago. Captain? What are you and that Keystone cop doing here? 
Now, looky here, Shane, you can't talk that way about me. Remember, I'm chief of the studio police, and I got rights. I, I... Nature in the raw. Here's another opportunity for your skill, Lieutenant. We've been waiting for you. Everybody around here seems to know more about police matters than the police. That's noble of you to admit it. Did you two nuisances touch anything around here? Nothing important. Good. Then clear out. And take that uniform moron with you. Come on. Suicide, huh? Looks like it. Well, I always thought it was Chalmers right from the start. Now who's the Keystone cop? He don't even know Chalmers was left-handed. <laughs> left-handed? Sure. That starts it all over again. I can remember when murders were nice, clean, simple things done with machine guns and meat axes. But this case... Trouble. Battery's dead. But didn't Miss Lane get a new battery just last week? Yeah, I don't understand it. It's bone dry. Uh, liquid's all gone. Just as I thought. We were right. It's poison. Electro il electrolytic liquid hall 38% distilled water, 33% electrolytic liquid, 7% by volume. The man said a teaspoonful on a glass kill a man dead. Electrolytic acid. Can yep. I say anything else? No. That was all. Them the same kind of trip that, that left the marks under Chalmers' window? Oh, there's probably a thousand cars in the Hollywood that have that make of make tire. Yeah, I never thought of that. Say, Gully. Huh? I want you to get me the key to Brent's dressing room, but don't let anybody know it's for me, see? Say, I'll get you the key to the city if you want it. Now, I have a couple of things to do. I'll meet you here in half an hour. Okay. Just a minute. Well, why all the locks? I was just going through some old letters and didn't want to be disturbed. Oh, I see. Where have you been? I've been waiting all afternoon for you. Oh, I've just been doing a little sleuthing. Marsha, you trust me, don't you? Why, well, yes, of course. You know I'd do anything in the world for you, don't you? I believe you would, dear. Then, is there anything you know about the murder of Brent that you haven't told me? No. I've just come from Chalmers' place. He's dead. Chalmers? Poisoned. You mean murdered? If it isn't that, it's a good imitation of it. Oh, how awful. Whoever did it used electrolytic acid. Acid out of a battery. The unfortunate part of the whole thing is that they used your car and the acid out of your battery. My car? That's why my car wouldn't start. Yes. I only told you this because I'm afraid Sheen will find out and arrest you on suspicion. That would mean headlines and scandal. What do you want me to do? I want you to get out of here. Any place, just so Sheehan can't find you. But that, that's running away. But only for a day or two, just to give me time. I'll go to Mary's at Malibu. She'll help me. Oh, that's swell. Make it fast, will you? There's no knowing how close she is behind me. I'll telephone you when I get it all worked out. You may have a long beard by then, but I'll try and hurry. Bye-bye, sweet.
on. I suppose you're surprised that I'm here, huh, Marcia? Frankly, yes. You haven't come to see me since... since Brent's accident? I should think you'd know why. I don't. I only know that I... that I want to help you. I have all the help I need. Marcia, you mustn't treat me like this. I never said anything to you while Brent was alive. But you should know how I feel. You succeeded in making your feelings quite plain enough. Marcia, I... I'm very fond of you. It's not the kind of fondness I care about. Please go now, Leon. I'm in rather a hurry. Marcia, maybe someday you will come to me and ask for help. Maybe you will apologize to me for laughing about how I feel for you. Perhaps Brent wasn't killed for nothing. How smart they are, always slip up. What's your name? Pardon me. Hello? Yes, sir, I will. Well, wait a minute, here she is now. Miss Lane, Mr. Steiner would like to see you in his office. Thank you. What's your name? Uh, Mr. Wheatcroft. Mr. Todd, please. Mr. Wheatcroft calling to see you. All right, thank you. Pull down that blind. Did you see Brent when he came in? I see everybody. What kind of a suit did he have on? Funny she and Miss looking in here. <laughs> You've been keeping them too busy. See what those letters are. Here's one from a dame named Agnes. Agnes who? <laughs> she ain't that dumb. She don't say much. Except that uh, she can't live without them. Married too. Says her husband don't understand her. Well, that's that old, old story. Two men and a woman. The internal triangle. What kind of a place is the Clipside Inn? Oh, you know, one of those weekend places with all the Mr. Smiths and Mr. Jones and Mr. Browns. Brent wouldn't go there alone, would he? <laughs> Not him. How far is Ocean View from here? A couple hours north on the coast road. Well, I guess that's a stop. Why? I'm beginning to think there's a woman in the case. No. Oh. Mr. Drew, this case has become uncomplicated. Even for me. <laughs> Come on. Gee, it's 4.30. I gotta check in on my next... Listen, don't go away without me, will you? <laughs> All right, Gully, I'll pick you up the gate when I go. Mr. Drew, I've been looking for you. Miss Lane wants to see you. She's in Mr. Steiner's office. Oh, thanks. Yes, sir. When did you find out your car wouldn't start? About an hour ago. Well, with all your dabbling, you didn't throw us off. You've thrown yourself off if you think Miss Lane had anything to do with Chalmers or Brent either. All right, all right. Just sit down there. And keep quiet. Where did you go this afternoon? I went downtown. In your car? Yes. Where did you park it? On the street. In front of Elsmith's flower shop. I ordered some flowers from uh, Mr. Brent's funeral. Then where did you go? You went to Chalmers' house, didn't you? Wait a minute, I won't stand for this. You can't trick Miss Lane into answers. And have little boy Blue over there take him down. Now keep quiet, Drew. 
You're trying to get at the bottom of this. Oh, no, you're not. Sheehan's trying to force Miss Lane into admission to things she's never done. Well, she might as well talk here as downtown. I've got a warrant for her. <laughs> for what? Suspicion of murder. What's your theory? It's as simple as ABC. Yes, it would be if you thought of it. Chalmers killed Brent because he hated him and she offered him money. Then she got frightened and killed Chalmers, thinking that he would get drunk and give it away. Every piece of evidence we have got points to her. It was her cigarette that blew up the dome. Her car that made the tracks outside of Chalmers' house. And acid from her battery that killed him. Oh, that's a lot of bunk. I know, you've got to make an arrest. It's okay with you. Trina, you can't sit there and let them arrest Marcia. Well, she has nothing more to do with these... than Lincoln had to do with the burning of Rome. Mr. Drew, we don't know whether Lincoln burned Rome or not. And we don't care. But this man is a policeman. So let us hear what he has to say. If you're not paying you to quarrel with the police. Oh, I don't care if you pay me a dime. Shem, if you arrest Miss Lane now, there'll be a lot of nasty newspaper headlines. Hold off for 24 hours and I'll be responsible. Better than that. I'll prove that she's innocent. Are you are making yourself ridiculous. I'm trying to protect one of your stars. Wait a minute, Steiner. Maybe he's right. What about this scandal? What about her box of his name? Ain't he got enough trouble here already without having Marcia arrested? Now, Mr. Grossmith, if you want to accept the responsibility, you can. But remember, this is a murder case. Two people are dead. And how do you know someone else won't be killed? For my part, I believe that the police should not be interfered with. Well, all I gotta say is that it's a terrible calamity. Let's go, Hilliker. I guess the explosion's over. Someone in this studio killed Miles Brenton Chalmers. And he's trying to pin it on Marsha Lane. But they won't get away with it. Come on, Miss Lane. Marsha, honey, I'm sorry. I'll get you out of this just as soon as I can. I know you will, Frank. I'm not worried, really. Come on. I expect to make me. I read all about it here. I expect. How do you do, sir? How do you do? I'm from the publicity office of the Tone Art Studio. Yes? I'd like to see a list of the uh, people who sent flowers to the Brent funeral. Oh. I think I have a list. Thanks. <laughs> Terrible thing about Brent murder, wasn't it? I hear they have listed the Marcia Lane. Yes, I, I guess she'll be one who won't send flowers. Oh, yes, she will. She was in here early this afternoon and ordered a big wreath. Oh, is that so? There you are. Mostly women. Oh, surprising so many of them gave their names. Oh, some of them didn't. There was a lady near just now who signed the check, then thought better of it and uh, tore it up. <laughs> didn't want the husband to see the cancelled check. Perhaps. Oh, pardon me. Yes, madam? Are there any gardenias? Oh, certainly. I'm not stopping. Oh. I have a key here a friend of mine carried away with him. Oh, thank you. My name's Drew. I'm from the Tone Art Studios. I'd like to keep this thing quiet. Keep what quiet? Brent's visit here the night before he was murdered. 
You see, if the papers get hold of a story like this, they play it up and it, it's bad for the picture business. Well, it doesn't do us any good either. All right, let's get together. Sure, what do you want? Who was the woman with Brent? Mrs. Brent? There is no Mrs. Brent. They were divorced. Well, then I don't know who she is. You see, I wasn't here when they checked in and they left in such a hurry, I didn't see them go out. In a hurry? Why? Well, a fellow came in here and started a row and uh, then he waited in that telephone booth over there and when they came down, he stepped out. At least that's what Charlie says. Who's Charlie? One of the night bellhops. Could I see him? Sure. Oh, Charlie. Yes, sir. Thank you. This gentleman wants to ask you a few questions. Shoot. Say, so you remember seeing the man who waited for Miles Brent in the telephone booth the other night? I just got a glimpse of him before the fight. What fight? Well, when Brent hit him in the patio. <laughs> well, how did it happen? Well, the lady ran out to the car when she saw the guy come out of the booth. Then the guy steps up to Mr. Brent and says, Brent, I want to see you. I thought it sounded kind of silly because he was seeing him right there. Well, then what happened? Well, Brent takes the guy outside in the patio. That's when he socked him. Well, then did Brent get into his car? Yeah, and the other guy picked himself up. Boy, was he mad. And was his face red? What did he say? <laughs> what didn't he say? Listen. It was awful. And then he beats it. Would you remember this man if you saw him again? Well, I might. And then again, I might not. It all happened so fast. Would you remember the lady? Sure. Say, she was a honey. She looked kind of funny. You know, like she was a foreigner or something. With an accent? Yeah. Oh, that's fine, Charlie. You've been a big help to me. Here. Thanks. Good night. Thanks. Good night. Say, are you a detective? No, I'm just from the studio. Will there be detectives here? I hope not. Call for Mr. Wallace. Calling Mr. Wallace. Which booth did that fellow hide in? There. How long has it been out of order? Just since the guy hid in there. I guess he kept pounding on the hook trying... Shell, shell. That's all you can think of is shell. Already this picture cost me $239,351. Better I put my money in the bank. Can I get any interest from my shelf? I'm not asking you to do anything. But how can we finish the picture without Brent? I have told you 17 times that we can use a double. And play the whole kissing scene in a long shot? Why not? Because it's all wrong. It's terrible. I've got my reputation to think of. And I got my money to think of. Money, money. What's money? <laughs> now, just a minute. Now, let's take it calmly. New York office is of the opinion that the murder of Brent won't hurt the picture if we can release it soon enough. Now, why not shoot that scene using a double and wind it up? It's the last scene in the picture. It can't possibly do you any harm. Exactly. Steiner has got right. Oh, all right. What's the use of arguing with him? Good. We can get the company together and shoot it tonight. Oh, wait a minute. What about Marcia? Oh, we can arrange with she and use her for that one scene. Yeah? She can come over with the whole police department if he likes. Everybody's on call and everything in the set is standing. We can shoot it in half an hour. Todd, uh, hold on a minute. What time? 7.30. Say 9.30. Uh, make it 9 o'clock. We'll save a half hour. Todd, we're going to shoot the last scene of the death kiss tonight. Round up the company for a 9 o'clock call. Sure, Mr. Steiner. Mac, we're retaking the death kiss. Get busy on the call. Hey. Yes, I love him all right. But say, what about Miss Lane? I take care of her. Yeah, fine. Look, I'm at 36. Hey, Mac, will you put that light over in the book? Screen 80, will you? Screen 80, Joe. Look, screen 80. Say, 27 and 42. George, I'll my camera. How about those up there? I think everything is all right. All right. Oh, good evening. Good evening. You know Mrs. Avery? Oh, yes, of course. How are you? I'm surprised you've come to see the street. Put it down to morbid curiosity. That's the woman of it. She insisted on coming. Now, come along with me. I'll make you comfortable. 
He's very good with the ladies. and he wouldn't. Well, do you know where he went? I got an idea, but I can't tell. Well, do you know when he'll be back? I don't know. He'll turn up. You can't lose that guy. We're ready for a rehearsal, Miss Lane. All right, thank you. Go ahead. We'll wait here. Thank you. All right. And just as you reach here, Miss Lane steps up and kisses you. Now, naturally, you're surprised because you don't know her. Then you turn, read your line to the doorman, and walk out of the curb. Right. Oh, Marsh. I'm so sorry about everything. I know it's going to be difficult for you, but I'll try and help you all I can. Thank you, Tom. Oh, you know Mr. Johnson? Yes, how do you do? Shall we try it once? Oh, George, let's have quiet, please. Quiet! Very hard, though. Take your places, please. Come on. Sound ready for rehearsal? Okay. Come on. This business gives me a funny feeling. What do you mean? I don't know. It just gives me a funny feeling, that's all. Supposing it should happen, somebody else is shot. It's ridiculous. Well, maybe it is and maybe it ain't. Anyway, I don't like the set and I don't like the title of the picture. The Death Kiss. Yes. From now on, we have no more titles with death in it. You're getting superstitious. Uh, say, you ain't got no nerves. Well, I ain't afraid either, but I'm just a little scared, that's all. What can possibly happen? <laughs> that's it, anything. I must have been overlooking something. Oh, bloody shame, sir. Most annoying. Right under me very nose. Wait a minute. What's the matter now? I can't get it with the mic there. Well, go ahead and fix it the way you want it. Right. Swing it in here, Father. Come on, Father. Now down a little closer. There. Is that in your picture? No, you your face there. Okay, test it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Microphone number two. All right, let's go. Okay for sound. Can I see you a minute? Well, if it isn't our little mystery writer. I knew you'd turn up. Have you solved it? Come over here a minute. What's the revelation? Well, I went through the clothes that Brent wore the night before he was murdered. I found a room key to the Cliffside Inn in his pocket. I went up to the inn and found that he'd registered there the night before as Mr. and Mrs. Brent. Not unusual for him, was it? No. But the husband of the woman that was with him waited for Brent in the telephone booth in the lobby. When Brent came down, they had a fight. Brent beat him up and left with the woman. Now, there's your motive. The fellow who hid in the telephone booth is the fellow who murdered Brent. It's a motive, sure. But it seems to me that everyone around here had a motive. Yes, but this same man knew a lot about electricity and a lot about film. Now, Chalmers couldn't have thrown that cigarette butt in the film because he was nowhere around at the time. Marsha couldn't have poured acid on the negative. Well, she knows less about film than you do. But this same fellow, whoever it was, found out that Chalmers had discovered his contraption in the lamp, stole Marsha's car, 
took acid again, Dr. Chalmers gin, and then returned the car. Yes, but why did he take Miss Lane's car? Well, to give himself a double-headed out. If you believed that uh, suicide gag, well, that was the end of it. If you didn't, everything pointed to Marsha. Whatever happened, he wouldn't be suspected. Yeah. But you have got to show me that the guy who was at the inn is someone here at the studio. And that he had access to the light, the film, the car, and everything else. Well, that's easy. A man who hid in the telephone booth left his trademark. What's this? Well, you know as well as I do that the scribblings a man makes on a piece of paper are as identifying as his signature. Oh. Now all we've got to do is to find the guy that scribbles like this, huh? Well, I've done that, too. Take a look at this. Where did you get this? In Grossmith's office. Now, Avery, Steiner, Grossmith, and Howell were in there having a conference. And you think one of those four killed Brent? Yes. Well, this is interesting. But I've only your word for it, and that don't count for much. Well, I'll keep your paper, dolls. But you have got to get me more substantial evidence than this before I can let Miss Lane go. Take good care of these guns, boys, and don't forget to check them back to me. All right. Thank you. Sure the gun isn't loaded? You bet not. I just looked at it. Mind if I look? Not at all. Is that clear to you? All right, we'll take it. Is everybody ready? Let's make it. Uh, Johnson, powder up, will you please? Sure. About you. Darling, I'm hot on the trail. I've got an idea. And if I'm right, I'll have this whole thing wrapped up and tied before you know it. But don't go away before I'm through, will you? Well, you bet I won't. Miss Lane, will you stand on a minute, please? See you later. is not loaded, is it? What do you think? I'm crazy? Mind if I look? Oh, go ahead. Thanks. Say, hey, Bill, those aren't the same guns you used before, are they? I know. I couldn't get 38s before, so I slipped in 45s. Nobody knew the difference. You mean 38s were called for before? Yeah, they made a row about it. Who insisted okay, on it? Okay, coming up. Come on with me. Listen, I've got it. It is Bill, the property man. He tells me on the day that Brent was murdered, he was definitely ordered to give all the extras 38 caliber guns. Yeah? Did you get it? 38 caliber guns were ordered. Now, if Bill had supplied them, we'd have never have known that it wasn't an accident. But he didn't. He substituted 45. That's how we knew it was a murder. <laughs> now, the fellow who ordered those 38s... Say, who ordered those guns? Go ahead, Bill. Tell him. Well, it was Mr. T Everybody, shut up!
Avery. Mr. Avery? So he's the one that ordered the guns. Yes, and like a fool, I told you about him under the microphone. He was listening in with the earphones. So it was him. Don't look at him now. He's dead. He's dead. Yes. I'm glad. The woman at the cliffside inn, huh? You stay here, Hilliker. Come on, go with me. I got him. I got him. There's your man. Who is he? You'll suffer for this, you despicable cad. So, you're a policeman, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I think I owe apologies to Miss Lane and to you too. I'm sorry that I was so unpleasant. You know, at first I could have sworn it was you. I knew it and it made me quite angry. But you're much more clever than I gave you credit for. Well, that sounds like a new contract. We could talk about that later. Oh, uh, Lieutenant, would you mind telling me why it is that detectives always wear their hats, even in the presence of ladies? Well, sure. That's so we won't have anything in our hands or arms in case we have to use them. <laughs> That's one for the book. Do you mind if I write it in right now? <laughs> <laughs> 